Back here with Digital Trends, DT Daily. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Greg Nibbler. Once again, we're live across all of our different platforms right now, working on bringing in our next guest, Charles J. Simon. But before we get to that, I want to welcome Drew Prindle back to the show. Hello, Drew. So there were some comments earlier just about um, your uh, video for the boring flamethrower that went on there. They said it looked like a... um, an early P. Diddy video. That's like the best compliment. I've that's seen. what was I that, thought. Was that supposed to be a diss? I think like it was that's... supposed to be a, they were supposed to rip on you, but I think it was, I think it was actually great. Oh man. Yeah. P. Diddy's early stuff was some of his best stuff. Exactly. Arguably, right? Like, oh man. Yeah. Thank you. Whoever said that. <laughs> so Drew is also the editor of our emerging tech category uh, here on Digital Trends. And so uh, we're working right now on getting our uh, interview on. But just to talk about that, actually, so our Charles J. Simon, uh, who actually wrote the book, uh, Will Computers Revolt, which is what the book is that I have right here. And so I believe that it looks like that we, we have him on. So let's go ahead and bring Charles on. There's a great new uh, piece at digitaltrends.com about this. You can see it in the background. Charles, uh, let's get, go ahead and bring you on. Can you hear me right now? It looks like we can't quite hear you. So again, we're live right now. This is live streaming. So for everybody who's watching, you know, as we work through some of this, and let's see. And I believe Charles is actually out. I believe he's on a. Ship. I believe he's on a ship. Yeah, uh, out at sea. He's at sea. He's yeah. Reading. Looks like we're still working on some of the audio right there. So uh, I'll let our our tech staff behind the scenes here is kind of working on that to get that dialed in. They'll let me know uh, when that's uh, when it's all working. But yeah, so so Charles is. For, like his his record of what he's done is just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. You know everything that he's been involved with, and uh, this book I think it's really fascinating. Now you've actually read through. Read yeah, through no, I didn't make it through the entire thing, but I uh, did my best to make it through it, and it's uh, it's pretty good. It kind of seeks to answer uh, a question that I think every pops into everybody's minds when you're talking about, you know, AI. It's like you know. I think everybody kind of accepts the fact that you know AI is going to be a thing. We're eventually going to reach the point where computers are as intelligent as humans in yeah. every aspect, whether that be just like factual knowledge or, you know, creative abilities or even emotional intelligence. Um, so it's, you kind of accept the fact that that's going to happen sometime in the future. Right. It's not so much a question of if as it's, much as it is when, but the question that comes after that is like, what happens then? Like, are computers going to be evil? Are they going to revolt against and that's, the creators? Like, how do we right. prepare for the future? And that's kind of what he seeks to answer in this book. And I think that's an important question to think about, because like you said, it's going to happen. Yeah. Like, this is happening. I mean, we see it every day just with, I mean, just how fast it happens, even when we talk about, you know, like smart home hubs or, or smart assistants. Yeah. You know, Google's already got one that can mimic the human voice, like mimic mm-hmm. speech patterns to where you can almost not even tell the difference. Yeah. So, and, and that's just, just the beginning of all of this. And that's really what he uses to kind of set up the beginning of the book. It's, he kind of makes the point that, you know, obviously this guy doesn't have a, a, a crystal ball. He doesn't know the future. He doesn't know exactly when it's going to happen. But he makes a very compelling point about, you know, it's probably happening sooner than we think. Yeah. AI, AGI, artificial general intelligence, where, you know, computers are just as smart as humans in every aspect. Um, he, he makes his, oh, wait, we got a little bit of audio there. A little bit of audio going. So we're, we're working here on getting the, uh, getting the audio in and, uh, and talking about that. Uh, Rain says, look at the game. This is on YouTube. Look at the game Detroit Becomes Human, which I've actually played part of that. You're right. Yeah, it's just about AI, about how much it's, uh, you know, interacting with everybody here. Sorry, I'm getting my audio adjusted myself. And this is part of, you know, the live show here at DT Daily, working on the tech. I'm getting uh, everybody dialed in from wherever. And I know Charles is on a boat, and you can't see him right now. We can see him, and I think he can hear us, but we can't hear him. You, oh, we can't we hear him. Like you We've sound got like a, a robot. Yeah, yeah you, okay. actually, Charles, are you actually a robot? This is what we need to know. I, I am not a robot, please, please, not, not yet. <laughs> so the the audio. So Charles, I'm just going to let you know since we're live. Um, so your audio is is uh, it's not working very well. It does. It, it's uh, what would be the right garbled. word? Garbled. Garbled. Yeah, garbled would be the right right word for it. Um, as we're talking about this, so I think maybe we'll work on that. Uh, maybe if behind the scenes can let me know if we'll try to get that dialed in or. Okay. 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 So I think I think we'll work on that and see if we can get that get that worked out uh, to get you joined in here. But uh, but still talking about your about your book. So for anybody who doesn't know, Charles is literally on a ship at sea right now. 
So that's where he's at. So that's what trying to trying to get that all dialed in. That's the tricky technical part right now. But let's walk through just a couple of things with the book too. So that way, if we do get him uh, dialed in here, we can uh, we can talk about this. And so one of the main things in the book, and again, it's will computers revolt? And the articles at digitaltrends.com is talking about the term AGI. Yeah. So what does the term AGI mean? Um, AGI is artificial general intelligence. That's, as I was saying earlier, the point when computers mm -hmm. are just as smart as humans yeah. in every aspect. And that is kind of a way for us to differentiate true AI from other forms of AI. Like we yes. have AI right now, but what, like in the context of like AGI, what we have right now is what's referred to as artificial narrow intelligence. So we have things that are smarter than humans, but only in very specific things. Take yeah. Like a calculator, for example, like way better at most people than, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, but it can't make you a cup of coffee. Or right. like, you know, it can't do like so many things that um, humans can do, right? Right. So yeah, artificial general intelligence is when it can do everything. So that's, so that's kind of what he's talking about, about where, where we're headed here. And yeah, there's yeah. essentially, you know, and as we're working on uh, getting Charles back on again, live on DT Daily, if you have questions, Drew's also very familiar with this subject, so feel free to drop those in there and we'll, uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk to him. I saw a couple of comments through uh, saying because of the audio issues, um, he sounds like the evil kit car, uh, <laughs> Charles. <laughs> and again, you know, we're, we're, we're bibbing this in through all, who knows what kind of channels to get Charles in here to talk with us right now. Um, but Charles does walk through in the book like four different kind of scenarios yeah, he's, that he, he makes, sees. makes the argument that, you know, this is going to happen eventually, and we, yeah. we really should start preparing because we don't know how soon this AGI kind of revolution is going to happen. And that's, so that, we, yeah, we that's unpredictable. preparing now. I mean, um, it's exponentially increasing, exponential, yeah, yeah advancements. And he's got four different scenarios for how this could potentially play out. And uh, the first one is the, uh, the the peaceful coexistence scenario. It's the, it's the it's best the, one. Yeah, it's, where everything's fine, everything's peachy. Yeah, yeah, it's basically we develop uh, artificial intelligence and instead of it, you know, revolting in kind of a negative way and trying to like exterminate the human race like you uh -huh. see in sci-fi movies, it's actually something that helps humanity, helps us achieve our goals, yeah. uh, solves all of our problems and we kind of just go into this like utopia that's brought in, right. ushered in by La da da, everything's fine. So that's the first like good situation, but then it kind of gets bleak from there. Yeah, which is, yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, let's go ahead and check here, just uh, checking our audio. Do we have... Charles dialed in. Charles, can you hear? I'm here. Oh, ah, all right. You don't sound like an evil kit car. Okay, let's uh, let's go. <laughs> Great. So let's go ahead and bring him on right now. Charles J. Simon, author of the book that we're talking about, uh, "Will Computers Revolt?" So, Charles, where are you at right now? I'm in Annapolis, Maryland, uh, out at sea in the in the Chesapeake Bay. Hey, you guys have been, been doing. I've been, I could always hear you, so you've done a great job of explaining the book while I've been uh, sailing. <laughs> well, that's that's great. Well, it's so good to have you on. You know, and this is a subject I'm actually really interested in. I I love learning about AI and just just the possibilities and where things are going. I know Drew is too. Um, let's talk about your book. So, what what was the impetus? What made you want to write this book? Will computers revolt? Well, I've been looking at this for yeah, many, many years. I I started writing the book in 1980 and withdrew it and wow. edited it and changed it. And, and uh, you know, I've always thought that com it, it seems obvious to me that computers will eventually exceed humans in intelligence. And I just wanted to explore those possibilities and talk about how that might work. And where it's, yeah, and where it's going to go. And, you know, we talked about it earlier. We brought up AGI. Uh, artificial general intelligence, and we're starting to go into kind of the four different scenarios that you see happening. I guess maybe before we even get to that, just to ask you, do you think robots are going to revolt? I don't think so, no. You don't? I think we'll be more careful. I think we'll be more careful than that. But this is kind of the warning right here, I would imagine. So <laughs> so let's walk through these four different things that we started talking about, but let's, let's just go from the beginning. Your four different scenarios, the ways that you think this could go down with the exponential advancement of artificial intelligence. Exactly. Well, scenario one, we'll call the peaceful coexistence scenario. And of course, you have to keep in mind that once you have a computer that is as smart as a person, in not very many years subsequently, you'll have a computer that's 10 times as smart or 100 times as smart or 1,000 or a million times as smart. And this is really inconceivable. So what happens is that as uh, computers can proceed, you simply end up uh, with a situation where computers and, and humans are not able to speak at the same rate. The computers are so much more advanced and so much faster than humans that we might be as interesting to them as a tree 
And so there's only a, a, a kind of a short time where computers and humans are working at the same speed. And at that point, we have a lot of interaction and we may come into some, some areas of, uh, of dispute. And so that's the, that's the point at which we have to be a little more careful. Where they're, yeah, they're starting to catch up. So just that, just even that interaction is going to be something where it, it may be indistinguishable for us as far as whether somebody is a human or an AI. Exactly. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'd be interested in is, is and, and this certainly applies to things like robocalls, maybe we should announce ourselves as being human or <laughs> conversely announce ourselves as being non-human at the beginning of a conversation. <laughs> I am human. Let's walk on to the next, <laughs> the next uh, subject here. So, so there's, that's one scenario. What's the next scenario? Okay, well, then we've got the mad machine scenario and the... Uh, <laughs> Which sounds horrible. Possibility. Well, yeah, well, when, when we develop machines, we have to remember that they are rule-based. Yes. And, um, and it, it, thinking of Asimov's three laws of robotics, where you create the rules, you create the entire behavior of the system. And so when you think about creating rules, the way humans are... We have a set of rules that we call instincts, and we've evolved those over millions of years, and they're designed for us to be able to survive in the wild and, and take advantage of things. And so we've become territorial and possessive and angry and things like that. And computers will live on a different set of rules because that's what we'll program, and there's no need for us to program rules that are similar. So uh, the computer is likely to be a lot more you know, of a pacifist than, than your average human simply because there's no need for us to program them to be aggressive. Yeah, there's no need to program jealousy or any of those, you know, kind of human emotions in there. Exactly. And so when we go through uh, the scenario there, the possibility exists, of course, that you either get a program, somebody that's, that's gotten misprogrammed or something like that. But in general, the, the, rule-based computer system is not going to be developed to be like a human in terms of having those kinds of interests. I mean, it makes sense. It's kind of like the debate right now talking about um, <clears throat> even for AI that oh, controls. I lost your audio. Oh, you lost us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll talk, talking to Drew <laughs> All right, uh, while we're working on getting you dialed in. Um, so that kind of reminds me of, you know, talking about the AI that controls cars. Like at what point is it we're going to have to have it make a decision to Save, there's a, the whole bus, oh, yeah, yeah, bus yeah. load of children yeah. or saving yourself from driving off a cliff. Like, how do you totally. tell the car what to do? Yeah. You know? Well, and, you know, that's a tricky question. It is, because we have, to, we have to program that in. And the thing is, we have full control over that process, though. So it's really... Um, but it's who is like, controlling that yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the crux of this, is like, you know, who... <laughs> what if it gets into the hands of the wrong person who uses this um, mm -hmm. the wrong way, I suppose? Yeah. Yeah, as for like personal gain to kind of like dominate the world. That's the which isn't something entirely possible, you know. That I mean, because actually... I mean, you see a lot of like AI and the technology. It's you know a lot of the most powerful ones and you know the biggest data sets that are being collected and turned into these AI machines are owned by big corporations right now. Yeah. Like, uh, so, I mean, it doesn't inspire a lot of faith. No, that, I mean, uh, it you, just, know, you start thinking about all the movies where it, you know. A movie scenario where yeah. it's like they're controlling all of the AI, which is pretty much the premise of a whole lot of movies that are coming out right now. Um, we'll still wait here to see if Charles can hear us. Uh, Charles, when you do hear us, if you can hear us, okay, I can't hear us. Um, please please uh, keep your comments and questions coming through here right now. I think basically what's happening is the robots want to keep us from talking about this, which is why obviously we That's need to, uh, to continue on and do our best. All right, looks like, looks like we're having some issues with it, but I want to encourage everybody to go and check out Charles' interview or his article at digitaltrends.com and get his book. You know, take a look at this book, Will Computers Revolt? I think it's fascinating. And it really is something that quite honestly, we all have to think about. I mean, it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be occurring. And so it's probably going to be one of these four different scenarios. We only got through a couple of them, but there's two more. They aren't as good. Um, but <laughs> there's, there's some other possibilities that could happen. So, again, I want to say a big thank you to Charles for joining us. And I think what we're going to do here is, uh, you know, the, the tech's not going to allow us right now to bring him back on. But like I said, check out that article.